Hello, I'm Caroline Specker, Head of Making Musicians here at Norwich School. We are going to go through a musical journey and I've invited some of our music scholars here at school to whiz through and show you all their different instruments. First of all, we're going to start with the strings. We have violin, viola, cello, and the biggest of them all, the double bass. Hello, I'm called Sefi and I play the violin, which is part of the stringed instrument, as you can see the strings over here. Um, the violin is mainly made out of wood and we use, we use a bow, which is also made out of wood and out of horse hair to play the violin. We um, use the shoulder rest, which is this, and we put it on our shoulder and then we use the bow to play the strings like this. Um, so that you can hear what the violin can sound like, I'll play you the opening of a piece by Beethoven. One of the reasons I love playing the violin is because it allows you to play in really big groups like an orchestra or you can play in slightly smaller groups like a string quartet which has four people, um, two violins, one viola and one cello um, and you can also play with just a piano accompaniment and you can play by yourself. Um, so the next extract is the beginning of one of Bach's solo violin pieces. The final extract I'm going to play for you is from a stick dance which was written by Bartok and most of it is played on the lowest string which is the G string which I really like because it makes such a rich sound and it sounds um, very rustic. <laughs> The violin is also used in contemporary classical pieces um, and you can make special effects on the violin such as this one. Which is one of my favourites but my all time favourite is this one. which, believe it or not, is actually used in some contemporary classical pieces. So if you do decide to play the violin, you can have good fun with that. Hello, I'm Alice, and today I'm going to be showing you my viola. But first of all, do you think my viola looks like another instrument in the orchestra? Well, you might be thinking it's a violin, but it's a little bit bigger and in fact, the strings which we play on the violin those are quite high, aren't they? However, on the viola they're much lower. Now, the viola is just as important as a violin is in an orchestra because we play all of the harmonies and without a viola in the orchestra, I mean, 
it just wouldn't work properly. So it is part of the string family. It's made of wood, again, like a violin or a cello, and the strings are made of metal. And we play it with this, which is called a bow. This is, well, this one isn't actually made of wood. This one is made of carbon fiber, which means it's really nice and light. And the part which touches the strings is actually made of horse hair. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So that's my viola, and the low string is called a C. And then we've got a G, D, and A. Which you might know is the same notes as the cello plays, and the cello is the really, really big one. I'm going to play a piece called Tambourine by Francois Joseph Gossec. <laughs> My name is Colette, I am 13 years old and I play the cello. The cello is part of the string family, alongside the viola, violin, double bass and many more. Uh, there are four strings and there are two ways of playing them. So I'm, first of all I'm going to pluck them, which is when you pull the string backwards. And first of all we have the C string, then the G string, then the D string, then the A string. The other method of playing the cello is um, by bowing, and this is the bow, and all you have to do is you glide it along the string like this. The examples of these uh, methods could be... Then for bowing, uh, most pieces are bowed, so much more common. This cello was made in the Victorian era in 1896, so it's very old. And I love playing the cello because I personally think that it has the most beautiful sound out of all the instruments. Uh, there are slow pieces like... and I play double bass. This is my bass. Uh, it's made of spruce on the front, I think, and maple everywhere else, and it's got an ebony fingerboard. I think that's pretty, that's pretty standard for, um, for string instruments. Uh, yeah, the, the reason I got into bass was because I was playing bass guitar when I was a teenager, and a bit of guitar as well, 
and uh, I was playing in a lot of bands and I was really getting into music and then I sort of discovered um, orchestral music and I really wanted to give that a go and try and get into that and I thought okay well I already already do the left hand on the bass I might as well you know and the, the tuning is actually exactly the same as it is on bass guitar and also the first the lower four strings of a guitar are exactly the same it's just E A D G so I thought okay well, I've just got to get just got to get this bit down um, yeah and uh, and I also played the cello for a little while and while I loved the cello uh, I kind of ended up missing this um, kind of missing that sort of warmth um, and the bass also has a, a really sort of unique high register it's just I don't know it's a find a really sort of I don't know sort of spoke to me in a way um, and yeah and obviously you know when I you know wanted to play in bands as well at the same time I still could you know you've you've still got all of that stuff available uh, yeah next we have the woodwind family the flute the oboe the clarinet the bassoon and the saxophone. Hello everyone, my name is Millie and I play the flute. The flute is a member of the woodwind family, which means that you use air to play it. However, unlike other members of the woodwind family, like the clarinet and the oboe, the flute doesn't have a reed at all. You blow across the hole in the head joint like this. Because you blow across the hole and not straight down it, the flute actually needs more air than the tuba. The first flute was made thousands of years ago and was made of bone. It was a little bit more like the recorder, as you blew down the instrument rather than across it like this. Most flutes now are made of metals like gold and silver, or wood, and you even get plastic flutes. And there are three main flutes that we play. There's the C flute, which sounds like this. This is the one that we use the most often. There's also the piccolo, which is like the baby of the family and is much higher. And then we have the alto flute, which is really big. And if I play the same thing on this flute, you'll be able to hear. To demonstrate, I'm going to play a flute solo from the opera Carmen on my C flute. My name's Eleanor and I play the oboe. Here it is. So the oboe is usually made out of wood and it has metal keys. It's long, gets bigger and quite round at the lower end. And this lower end is called the bell. Just this bit here, the bell. The oboe is a woodwind instrument and sometimes people muddle it up with the clarinet because they look quite similar. However, they are completely different instruments and they sound completely different. The oboe has a double reed. This is the double reed, and it's called a double reed because it's made of two reeds. When you blow into it, the air you blow makes the noise, like this. It's quite a different sound to the clarinet. Another instrument that has a double reed like this is the bassoon. The oboe was first made about 400 years ago, and as well as this type of oboe, 
There is the bass oboe, the cor anglais, and the oboe d'amore, which is the oboe of love. Oboe players are usually called oboists, and there are usually two oboists in an orchestra. It is the oboe that plays a tuning note of A at the beginning of concerts, so that the whole orchestra, orchestra can tune their instruments to that note. This means they will sound in tune when they play. You put your fingers over the holes here to make the different notes. I really enjoy playing the oboe because it sounds so different to other instruments. It has its own unusual sound, which I really like. Another reason I like it is because there aren't that many people who play the oboe. In a large orchestra, there can be as many as 30 violin players, but only three or four oboists. Blowing the reed takes a bit of practice, but you soon get used to it, and you won't sound squeaky after a while. Playing the oboe is great. I can play it on my own or in an orchestra, and it's really fun. <laughs> clarinet. Much like the oboe, saxophone and flute, the clarinet is part of the woodwind family of the orchestra. Therefore, most clarinets are made of wood. Some can also be made of plastic. Along the clarinet there are a series of metal keys. These keys are used to change the note that you play. Each key is operated by your fingers and opens or closes a hole somewhere on the clarinet to change the note. The way in which the clarinet makes its sound is by using a reed. The reed is a very thin piece of wood. The reed is strapped to the front of the mouthpiece, leaving a very small gap. When the reed is wet and when you blow through the clarinet, the reed is able to vibrate, creating a sound. The harder you blow, the faster the reed is able to vibrate and the louder the sound that you create. The clarinet is one of the newest instruments in the orchestra and was first invented around the second half of the 18th century. Therefore, one of the first composers to write music extensively for the clarinet was Mozart. To demonstrate to you the beautiful sound that the clarinet makes, I'm going to play you the opening of one of Mozart's most famous pieces of music, Eine Kleine Nacht music. Hi, I'm Emil, and this is the bassoon. This is a really large instrument, which measures over a metre in height, and if you stretched it all out, it would be nearly as tall as the tallest person to ever exist. It's made out of maple woods and metal for the keys, and it's part of the woodwind instruments and has a double reed. You play it by blowing into the reed and you make different notes by pressing down the keys and covering the holes with your fingers. The bassoon's really low and you can go down to this note. It's one of the lowest instruments and its sound and way of playing it is why I really enjoy playing the bassoon. And here's what it sounds like in a piece. Thank you. 
Hello, my name is Nora and I play the saxophone. A saxophone is a musical instrument made out of brass and often just called a sax. There are four main types of saxophones, soprano, which has the highest pitch, alto, tenor and baritone, the deepest. These are my alto and tenor saxophones. As you can see, the tenor is much bigger than my alto. Saxophones are made out of brass, but it's actually not part of the brass family, but rather in the woodwind family because it uses a reed. The saxophone was developed from the clarinet and shares many similarities. The player blows into the instrument through the mouthpiece and makes a sound. To change pitch, you need to use your lips. To go lower, you need to loosen your jaw, and to go higher, you need to tighten, but not too much, else you won't get a sound. The saxophone is a very common jazz instrument. Jazz is another genre of music. It's very fun, and you can make up your own tune. It's known as improvising. You can make almost anything sound jazzy, like Christmas tunes. I will now play a jazzy version of Deck the Halls. <laughs> listening and I hope you give it a go. Now it's the brass family, the French horn, the trumpet, the trombone and the daddy of them all, the tuba. Hi my name is Alex, I play the French horn. It's a brass instrument, it consists of about 20 feet of narrow tubing coiled into a circle. It has the widest range of notes of any of the brass instruments but is the most difficult one to play. It is best known for hornpipes, fanfares and lots of film scores such as Star Wars, Star Trek and Lord of the Rings. There are also many brilliant orchestral parts for the horn. The horn always gets the best tune. <laughs> Hi, I'm Daniel, and this is the trumpet. It's a member of the brass family of instruments, which also includes the trumpet, the trombone, the tuba, the euphonium, and the French horn. Trumpets are made out of brass, which is a, a strong material and helps give it its sound, although this has a silver plate on it. They've been made in brass since about the 15th century, um, but they're even older than that, with very early trumpets being found dated back to 1500 BCE, which is very, very old. Um, and with ancient trumpets being found in the pyramid tomb of Pharaoh Tutankhamun, um, and also in the burial sites of the ancient Chinese emperors in the Far East. Now, what would people use these instruments for? Well, historically, they are used on the battlefield because they're very loud and clear. They can be used to coordinate attacks and is a very early communication system. Um, evolving on from that, they became associated with high-ranking generals and members of the elite and the kings. And so they evolved into things like fanfares and having a courtly use. And you began to see decorative trumpets, trumpets that weren't just one long piece of pipe, but that had special emblems on, coats of arms, uh, pictures and symbols that represented the king's who these trumpets would be the fanfare players for. Um, they're also famous in the Bible. Uh, the shofar, a very early version of the trumpet, 
um, which doesn't have any vowels or anything like that, and is just a piece of ram's horn, um, was supposedly powerful enough to bring down the walls of Jericho. Um, but trumpets nowadays have evolved somewhat. Um, they have these valves on. Now, these are called piston valves because you can press them down, although you get other types of valves, things like the rotary valves. Um, but what these do is they allow you to play different notes, different pitches. Um, and because the, the, the note the trumpet is produced is determined by the length of pipe, you see this is one long pipe that's been wound up, the trumpet valves have lots of different holes in them, in each one in different positions. And by pressing them down, you lengthen and shorten the amount of pipe that the air and the frequency waves, the sound waves, has to travel through, which will change the note of the instrument. Um, it's played with a special embouchure, special lip position, that's almost closed with the air really forced through, as if you were blowing on raspberry. Um, but once you do that onto this mouthpiece here and this lead pipe, it will convert that into a musical note and then come out the bell at the other end. This is On the Sunny Side of the Street by Jim McHugh. <laughs> I'm 16 and I play the trombone. Um, this is it here. It's got three main parts to it. This is the mouthpiece where you blow into. <laughs> this is the bell where the noise comes out of. And this is the slide, um, which is the fun part. You get to slide it up and down. Um, I've been playing the trombone for about 10 years now, maybe. It's quite a long time. 10 years roughly, and I really like it. It's my favorite instrument. It's in the brass family. You'll usually see it near the trumpets in the orchestra. Um, and it's known for being quite loud and metallic in sound. Um, so here's a little bit of a trombone concerto. <laughs> superior instrument on the planet. Hello, my name is Tristan and I play the tuba. I've been playing the tuba for two years now and I play in a brass quintet. A brass quintet contains two trumpets, a French horn, a trombone and a tuba. In the orchestra, the tuba belongs to a family called the brass family and it is made out of a metal called brass. This is the mouthpiece. I feel that the mouthpiece is the most important part of the instrument because it is how you produce the sound. If you blow a raspberry relatively lightly, but not too lightly, like this, <coughs> you'll make a low sound. But if you blow a raspberry very tightly, like this, <coughs> you get a high pitched sound. Now, the mouthpiece goes here on the tuba and you can just slot it on here and it goes in. The tuba is actually the Latin word for tube and Latin is the language that people spoke thousands of years ago. This is basically just an uncoiled tuba 
and you can play it like this. <laughs> You might want, if you're beginning on the tuba, you might want to try this. On a tuba, there are four buttons you can press called valves. These valves, when you press them, can change the pitch of the notes. You might have also missed that on, on an adult tuba, there's this fourth valve, but if you're beginning on the tuba, you might not have this. Tubers can also play fast music, not just slow, floddy music, like this tuba concerto by Capuzzi. <laughs> And here's a tune you might know from a film called Raiders of the Last Ark. <laughs> We have a few more instruments to show you. The guitar, drums, and the harp, and a few keyboard instruments too. The piano, harpsichord, and the organ. Hello, I'm Zach, and this is my electric guitar. Um, this instrument has two key features, the neck and the body. The body just holds all of these parts in place, and the neck is where you place your fingers to create different pitches. On the neck we have these things here called frets, these little metal pieces that go across. Um, all they do is just give you a good area to put your finger in instead of having them on one particular spot. They are really helpful for when you're trying to play something fast. And up here we have the headstock. The headstock just holds all of these tuning machines. There are six of them because there are six strings. Um, if you turn them in either direction, they'll change the pitch of the string. I, I won't fiddle with it now because my guitar's already in tune. In tune just means that all the strings are at the correct pitch. And here's the body. The body is made out of wood. Uh, it can be cut into many different shapes. There are loads of exciting shapes out there, but this is just the most, probably, yeah, the most popular shape out there. This is the bridge, this metal thing here. It just holds all the strings onto the body. Uh, these three things are called pickups. There are various different types that will create a different sound. Um, they just use magnets in them to convert how far the string is moving, like that, really, really quickly, faster than you can see, into an electric signal, which comes out of the guitar there. But then once the signal comes out of the guitar here, it goes into this lead, and the other end of the lead gets plugged into the amp, if I can find it, there. Um, the amp just converts the electricity into sound and makes the sound louder so you can actually hear it and then plays it through a speaker. There are loads of different effects that you can use. I'll just show you the most common one. So this is just a normal guitar sound. And how about overdrive? Yeah, and I'm going to play you a quick part of a piece. Hope you like it.
Hi, my name is Rue. I play drums. Um, the drums is part of the percussion family in the orchestra. There are many different instruments in the percussion family. So, for instance, you have the triangle or the timpani, which is basically just one massive drum like this, but a lot bigger. All the percussion instruments have something in common. You have to hit them with some form of stick like this to produce a sound, like so. There is also an electric drum kit which is made out of plastic and you hit it and it makes a sound in like headphones or something. I play drums because I find there's a lot of musical freedom in drums. You can play songs which you hear all the time. For instance, you might have heard something called uh, a song by Queen which is uh, We Will Rock You, it's quite simple. And it's a very well known song. Loads of people really like that song so you can play it whenever you want, it's really cool. Uh, there is a lot more advanced stuff which you can play when you get up there, uh, maybe like this. Stuff like that. Uh, and you can also do, uh, you can uh, play notes really quickly when you want to. So uh, say you want to play some like doubles, so like something like that. You can like speed that up and make it sound cool. So like. Loads of stuff like that. I really like drums because of that. You have a lot of musical freedom and you can do whatever you want. Hello, my name is Zoe Anderton and I'm a harpist. I'm going to explain some of the ins and outs of playing the harp. Um, the first thing is that this is a full-size pedal harp. This is one that you would commonly see played in an orchestra or in a concert hall. This harp has got 47 strings and the way I find my uh, fingers around the strings is through the colours of the strings. So all of my C's are red. All of my black notes are F. And everything else is in between. So if you read piano music, you'll know that C is first. C, D, B, F, G. If I want to change the key, I use the pedals below. So on my left side is B, C and D, and on my right side is E, F, G and A. So for example, if it's the pedals in the middle, that's natural, which is this sound. If I push my foot down, it will sharpen it, so that's a C sharp. And if I flip the pedal up, it will flatten the sound, so that's a C flat. I'm going to demonstrate to you just the sound of the harp, so you get an idea of what kind of sound it produces. So see if you recognise the tune. themselves actually tune their harp. So we have a tuning key and we'll put it on the, the note we want to tune and it's very slowly, not quickly, because I'll snap the string. And you just move it up or down. So it keeps in tune because obviously temperature changes can affect the, the sound of the harp. So you always have to check that all 47 strings are in tune. So hopefully you've learnt a little bit more than you did before about the harp. Thank you very much for listening. Hello, I'm Adam, and this is a harpsichord. The harpsichord belongs to the keyboard family of instruments, but we don't really see it so much anymore, as it fell out of fashion around the late 18th century, when the piano was being developed. The harpsichord works by plucking the strings using a plectrum made of bird quill or plastic, and this sits at the top of a jack. The jack sits at one end of a key, and when you press a key down, this gets the, lifted up, moves past the string, and plucks it with the plectrum. Now, this means we can't do dynamics, but instead we have multiple sets of strings per note. So we have a louder set of strings 
for this bottom keyboard. And for the top keyboard, we have slightly quieter strings. We can actually couple the two together and play both at the same time. And when I do that, you might be able to see that these keys move with the bottom keys. I love the challenge the harpsichord presents me, because by itself it's not a particularly musical thing, and it's left for the performer to put the musicality into it. You don't really see the harpsichord in the modern orchestra, but in the orchestras of the 16th, 17th and 18th centuries, there is normally one or two harpsichords playing chords with the right hand and the bass line with the left. To finish, I'm just going to play a short extract of some Bach, uh, the end of the prelude in C major from the well-tempered clavier. Although they sound the same, as you go up the keyboard to the right, the notes get higher. And as you go down the keyboard to the left, the notes get lower. Each time you hit a key on the piano, it makes a sound. This is because as you hit the key, a hammer on the inside will strike some strings, creating the noise. For example, in slow motion, it will be like this. And again. Below the keyboard, you will find these three things, which are called pedals, and they are controlled by the feet. The one on the most right is the one used most often, and we call it the sustaining pedal, or the damper pedal. What it does is it makes a note longer. For example, without a pedal, a note would sound like this. With the pedal, it would sound like this. Now I've let go completely with my hand, but not until my foot is released will the note end. Now I will play for you a really short excerpt from the Mozart Piano Sonata in G major. Thank you for listening and I hope you have a great day. Hello, I'm Adam and this is an organ. This organ is a digital organ, which means it has speakers rather than pipes, but the sounds it makes are the same. This has three keyboards for my hands, called manuals, and one big keyboard on the floor for my feet, called a pedal board. The way an organ works is by pushing air into pipes. The air vibrates, and that makes the noise. The highest sound an organ makes 
is this one. And that has a very short pipe, shorter than this pencil. The lowest sound is this one. Which is so low it's actually beyond the range of human hearing. So you don't hear a note so much as a rumble. That pipe is 32 feet long, which is around 10 metres, and so wide that you could quite comfortably live inside it. Whilst the organ hasn't changed much since it was first invented in 310 BC, every organ is different, and that provides a real challenge for the player, because you have to learn an instrument very carefully when you turn up at a, a new church for a service or a recital. To finish, I'm going to play a short piece by J.S. Barr. We hope you've enjoyed this musical journey and perhaps we've inspired you to have a go yourselves.